FT's back on Stadium and on AMP for the first time for the listening crowd. And we're going to bring in our next guest. Uh, you can follow him at 3-2-EFIS. And you can see him right now, Levi Weaver, joining us. And he writes the uh, Daily Windup in The Athletic. And I'm a big fan. So, Levi, reading it every morning. Thanks for your work. I know you're hustling every day to put that together. How you doing? And we got a lot to get to. I'm doing all right. I'm uh, I'm just looking forward to talking to Todd Frazier, who I covered in 2020 with the Rangers, and it was all on Zoom, just like this. So now you get to ask yeah. me some questions, Todd. Hey, some, think, some things get, never change. We get to do this in reverse. Yeah, doing, exactly. Guys? Yeah, let me, we're good. Let, let me ask you a question. Those cards behind you, are those yeah. real deal, or are they just, just for uh, yeah, show? Yeah. No, those are real. Wow. I got my uh, – where are we at? There we go. Here's the, the crown jewel right here. Oh, I don't know my. if you can see that very well. Oh, way. You, yeah, you got to get Gibson. that thing graded, big dog. I know. I know. I actually got it really cheap on eBay. Uh, I do not have the kind of, of like income to actually be paying for a Bob Gibson rookie card. But somebody on eBay let it go for really cheap. So, <laughs> Yet. <laughs> nice. Yet. The newsletter's blowing yeah. up. So there, there was a lot that you covered for early September this week. I want to start with Shohei Otani. No, 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 dude. He covers the Rangers. Let's start with the fucking Rangers and what's wrong with them. <laughs> I'm leaving. Forget oh, the Shohei. We'll get to Shohei. <laughs> the biggest series of the damn season right now is the Rangers and the Astros. But it's and the not, Rangers it got their ass series. kicked. It hasn't been a series. I know, but I want to hear his thoughts on it. He covers them. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I did. Uh, I, I have. Uh, it's funny. I, I started covering the Rangers in 2016, and they went to the playoffs that year. And I was like, this is great. Baseball writing is going to be fun forever. And then I covered the Rangers for the next, what, six, seven years where they were just uh, not not great at all. It was a whole lot of not fun. This year I moved to uh, newsletter coverage and they start winning again. And I'm like, dang it, I just I left just at the wrong time. And now this month I'm feeling pretty good about my decision because it is it is not fun times in Arlington. The bullpen is uh, is just I mean, they're the talent in the bullpen, I think, is is better than what they've been performing. But the performance has been awful. Um, and I think the I think the biggest thing for me is that like the bullpen hasn't been good all year. It was never you know it would have its moments. There would be times when it would be streaky and be pretty good, but it was covered up early in the year because the Rangers were scoring seven, eight, nine, ten runs a night. I mean the offense was just going nuts every night. Now the offense is cold, um, and when the team's scoring two, three, four runs a night, that bullpen's not good enough to keep those leads, and it's it's bad times. Like I don't. If the Rangers are going to go to the playoffs, which they're currently a half game out of uh, playoff position right now, it's going to have to be because their their offense wakes back up. I don't think they have the bullpen to do it. The rotation's pretty good. Evaldi wasn't great last night in his first start back, but he's a better pitch than what we saw last night. Max Scherzer is Max Scherzer, even though he's not you know the max of eight, nine years ago. Um, Jordan Montgomery's been very good. John Gray has been very underrated, I think, but he just doesn't get any run support. But I think the success of this team is going to be if their offense can come back and start scoring those six, seven, eight, nine runs a night. Well, let, let me let me ask you this real quick and simple. Are they are they going to make the playoffs in your mind? That I don't think the Mariners right are there. as good as they <laughs> are as good as they've played. Uh, the Blue Jays are inconsistent. It's going to be close. It's it comes down to I think only one of the Mariners, Blue Jays, and Rangers is going to make the playoffs. So if one of those teams gets hot, they're in. Um, but I think only one of those three get in. And I think either one has the ability to do it. Any one of two the three of have three. the have the horses. Is, do you think it'll be two of the three? three? Yeah, it has to be. It does that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless, yeah, Todd, because... unless Todd's Yankees go on a run that he's calling for. Or Jared Kyle <laughs> misses Red Sox. No, no, hey, no, right, 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 right. Listen, listen. They got to play Seattle seven times before the season's over with. So that that that's right. going to be it right there. You're right. It is one and of I, those two teams because I was. Yeah, I agree I with you. That. I don't. The, the I, I don't think Seattle's going to make. I think they they bursted their bubble already. I agree with you. So you think it'll be the Rangers and the Blue Jays then in those last two wild card spots? I think it's going to be the Rangers and Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> the Yankees are. Stop it! Come on, we already two. Just so a now. rookie hey, run. Listen, there's been crazy. The Rays were up like now five hundred. Listen, uh, no, forty home runs in the last two weeks of the season. The Rays have been up by like 20 games, and now the Orioles are in first place. You never know what can happen. That was with 160 games to go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you never know. 
Dude, Dude I want I don't want to leave I don't want to lose Levi. Uh, we did. We lost him. Let's bring Levi Weaver back as he's now recovered after Todd Father's Sorry. line about the Yankees' chances of making the playoffs, yeah. but you can jump my, right in here. On uh, my wife, I could not handle the hot take. You're, you're uh, good, yeah, man. so I, I heard you guys, uh, that, and I, I had the same thought last night while I was writing. Like that picture came out of the guy who was the body double, and I was like, I, there are many times in my life where I wish for infinite knowledge. Like I wish I could just answer every question that I have. I want to know who that guy is. I want to know how he got the job of Otani body double. It's LA. They probably put something on, you know, Craigslist, or I'm sure there's some, <laughs> the actors guild is on strike right now. Aren't they? Somebody's you yeah. know, people have, people have uh, a lot of, a lot of spare time. Who is this guy? I want to know. And also the other question that I had, whose decision was this? Like, I, I don't know what I would have done differently. Like you have photo day. It's been scheduled. Otani can't make it for whatever reason. He's just, you know, not available. You can't add the team photo without Otani. This is probably your last chance to have a team photo with Shohei Otani. I don't know what the solution is, but they picked the most hilarious one. Uh, and and like they probably should have just done it before any media were allowed in the ballpark. But they didn't. There were media in the ballpark, but then they were shielded from like talking to this guy. So it was just enough intrigue. You know that like the one thing people in media hate and also simultaneously love is a secret they're like okay that's something for me to solve i have to figure out what's going on here there's something weird happening i'm going to get to the bottom of it they created more intrigue than there had to be but whoever's decision this was thank you priceless it was the most hilarious possible option that they could have taken <laughs> and uh and they took it and it's funny hey were you a big believer in keeping otani or trading him because I, I was big on getting his ass out of anaheim uh, so the way that I put it was that it was the logical decision to trade him. They they should have traded him. It was the smart thing to do. It would have sucked. You know, you never want to be the one who trades Shohei Otani, but that was the smart decision. I am just enough of a romantic at heart that when they were like, no, we're going all in, forks in the cannon, boys. Like, we are going to shoot the moon. This is very unlikely that it's going to work out for us, but dang it, we believe. And I mean, as a fan of a team, like if you're an Angels fan, you have to love it when ownership goes, you know, forget the odds, screw the odds. I, I care. I want to win. I'm going all in, even though it's probably not going to work. You love that as a fan. It's not logical. It's dumb, but cool. You know, they made the cool, dumb decision. So Angels fans probably loved it. Uh, but yeah, they, they should have traded him for sure. And then, of course, it didn't work out. So it's easy for people like me to go back and go, yeah, I said all along they should have traded him. All right, so then my next question would be, should Mike Trout go to Artie Moreno and say, I'm up. It's my turn. I'd like to try to be Got a winner. I've helped you guys for 10-plus years. I'll help you now with prospects. If people on Twitter are crushing me because they're like, oh, he's washed up. He's hurt all the time. He's not going to get a haul. I guarantee you, if you put Mike Trout out there, there will be a team that will bite. You're going to have to buy down oh, some of the salary, sure. but there will be a for team sure. that bites and gives you something back. Absolutely, and I think that would be – a smart move for Mike Trout. Um, but you never know with guys, you know, there's, there's some guys who want to be a single player team or single team player. They want to be the Cal Ripken or whatever. Um, I don't know why you'd marry yourself to the angels of all people for that whole entire career, because they seem to be fairly dysfunctional. Um, but you know, Hey, sometimes we all love dysfunctional people. So that, that might be what he wants. And if that's his uh, priority, great. I think, yeah, I think you're exactly right. Move on. Go to a team that is uh, better designed to win, that has uh, more logical leadership at the top. And and I'm not, not I'm not talking about Perry here. I'm, I am actually talking about Artie Moreno. He can be reliably counted on to not make the most logical decision. Um, yeah, I, I would ask for a trade if I were Mike, Mike Trout. And the Angels should do it. They they are not going to win next year. They traded a bunch of prospects to bring in Lucas Chilito and Ronaldo Lopez. Who they, hey, hey, that's you know, Max just, White Sox. It be nice. That's a package. Too. Hey, no, I'm not ripping deal. on the players. I'm not ripping on the players at all. I'm ripping on the fact that they tr they went all in, traded prospects, mortgaged some of the future for these guys, and then two weeks later were like, never mind. You guys can go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's all about the salary cap, baby. All right, so Levi, you cover the sport nationally now. Um, you've gotten away from the Rangers, which at this point is good for you at the moment. What do you think is the most interesting storyline or story? Because you also read every or many of the 
maybe every um, athletic baseball article so that you can compile them for the newsletter that you put together. So I'm not going to let you go, Otani, but you can go basically anywhere else, whether it's like some of the pretty shitty news we've gotten lately on guys like Arias and Wander Franco, some of the stars of the sport that are missing right now, kind of give you the lane to go where you want to go, where you've found things both interesting and impactful in the sport. Uh, I think the Cincinnati Reds are the, the, the one story that has been the most interesting to me this year. You know, it wasn't long ago that their owner was saying like, where else are you going to go? Fans were mad, could sell the team. Like it was bad times in Cincinnati very, very recently. And all of these young guys, and of course headed up by the uh, inimitable Ellie De La Cruz, they've just been so much fun to watch. And if Hunter Green can come back and be, you know, pretty good, if Andrew Abbott can continue to be pretty good, and then they'll have to patch it together after that. I don't think they're a World Series contender, um, but man, they're a lot of fun. And they've got so many just rookies and second year guys that the enthusiasm is great. You got Joey Votto, who is one of my favorite players in the sport, just kind of almost a grandfatherly figure at 39 years old, like playing with these young kids. Love the Reds, want the Reds to win, go Reds. Uh, and then in the American League, I think kind of a similar vibe there of a team that's got a great young lineup with uh, the, the Baltimore Orioles. And also pitching is questionable. Um, I would love, to, I would love so much to see an Orioles Reds world series. Wouldn't that like, wouldn't that be great? No, no Dodgers, no Braves, no Astros. Give me, give me the Reds. Give me the Orioles. I would love to see that. Just, no chance. What is this, 1974? <laughs> yeah. Is that what it was? Yes. I don't know. I'm Do you no see fan. what's behind me? Do you see what's behind me on That's the wall? Give me some 1974. True. That'd be great. So who is it? So we know the Reds aren't winning. Who's winning the World Series? Oh, it's going to be the Braves. 100%. Is that boring? Did you you seem so bored about that. We're talking about the World yeah, Series bored. champions. Right. The Braves have been good for a long time now. And and good and kudos to them. And, you know, Braves fans are not going to like that I'm bored with it. But I'm kind of bored of, like, the Dodgers. I'm bored of the Braves. Bored of the Astros. I want to see somebody like the Reds or the Marlins or, you know, I, give me the Blue Jays. I take the Blue Jays. Like, just somebody that we haven't seen in the World Series for a while. I think, that, like, I love that the Phillies went to the World Series last year. That was great. Um, I think probably is that I just, I'm easily bored and I don't want to see the same teams every year. Uh, I love parody, uh, P-A-R-I-T-Y. I love parody, P-A-R-O-D-Y also, but for completely different reasons. <laughs> by the yeah. way, have you, uh, <laughs> Levi, have you heard of the 98 Brave song by Morgan Wallen? Uh, you could have put any words in the middle of that sentence and I would say no. Have you heard by Morgan Wallen? And the answer would be no. Okay. All right. Because there's a song, Morgan Wallen, 98 Braves, that talks about the 98 Braves and how they were supposed to win because they were the best team. And it's a great song, but listen yeah. to it next time. Now you're like, heard... Oh, it's so boring because they were supposed to win the whole 90s and they won one. Right. I've heard Yankee and the Brave by Run the Jewels. I've never heard of them or that. So we could just trade song recommendations. <laughs> <laughs> That's Todd's song, Yankee and the Isn't Jewels. Is Morgan Wallen a big deal in Texas? <laughs> Morgan Wallen's a big deal uh, yeah, all over probably. the place. I know, I know. Uh, Levi, awesome to catch up with you, dude. Um, hope you recover from Todd's hot Yankee take. And we'll talk no, to you in a few weeks when the Yanks are in the playoffs. Absolutely. I'm ready to talk about Jason Dominguez, playoff player. Let's go. That yep. I